so the next medal is the New Zealand Association of Scientists Cranmore Medal. That's awarded to a practicing scientist for excellence in communicating science to the general public in any area of science or technology. And historically, this has been like um, a certificate and, and, and things like that. And the, the fact that we brought it up to the Communications Medal and now a named Cranmore Medal um, signifies how important communicating science has become in, in all our, our daily lives, I think, it's fair to say. Um, and I think um, Peter Buchanan would be a good person to talk to about Lucy Cranwell, is that a fair thing to say? Uh, That's a yes. Yes, yes, okay. Sure. Um, so, so this year's Cranwell Medal goes to Dr. Judith Baker um, from the Department of Microbiology and Immunology again at the University of Otago. Um, and so over two decades, Dr. Baker has built a hands-on and face-to-face -face science communication program from scratch with limited resources. She has exposed many thousands of students to a world they have not seen before and to the many ways that humans interact with microbes. Her resource packs for teachers have gone out to support biology teachers nationwide as well as teachers in the Cook Islands. Dr. Beta is also the convener of Hands On at Otago. It is the organizing committee of the International Science Festival, is a school science fair judge and regularly speaks at conferences for scientists and science communicators. All of these activities are additional to her employment Dr. Beta is a passionate advocate and effective practitioner of science communication and education at all levels. So, Judith. as well. It's always really special when you're recognised by your peers and so um, this means a lot to me to be here tonight. I've just put a couple of slides together because I think you might be interested in my journey and, um, and what I actually do in the lower half of the South Island. So I went, uh, I'm a microbiologist but that was really um, just a chance thing because I went to Otago University to study sciences not microbiology. I hadn't heard about microbiology when I was at school. And thankfully, I found microbiology in my first year and changed my degree so that that was what I graduated in with a BSc honours and then a PhD. And it's an incredibly fascinating discipline. It's so rapidly evolving and the best thing is it has so many applications to our life. So as my career progressed, I wanted to give back. And specifically, I wanted to try and get more microbiology taught in secondary schools so others following me would hear about microbiology and hopefully be amazed by the wonders of it. So 20 years ago, I started a program of workshops for local secondary school teachers. In the weekends, the teachers would come in and one year we discussed environmental microbiology, the next year was immunology, later on we did some practical exercises they could take back to the classrooms. The idea beginning was trying to increase the teacher's confidence in teaching this quite difficult subject at secondary schools. I thought I was doing a good thing, you know, giving the, the village the fishing rod and not just the fish. But then I quizzed the teachers and asked how the microbiology teaching was going and I was told that, oh, you know, we've got some microscopes in the cupboard but no one knows how to use them. So my plan wasn't working. At the same time, my children were starting school, and so I was asked, often asked to go in and um, help out with some science. Primary school kids in science is just great. Now, this picture on my left is, um, has one of my children in it, actually, and he's now six foot three, <laughs> and studying first year science at Otago University. So I looked at teaching science directly in the classroom with different groups at different ages, trying to think, what would be the best time to target student, um, pupils to, to get them interested in science? And the answer to that is there's no best time, it's every single age. But for me, microbiology is taught at year 11, at NCEA level 1, and there are a couple of achievement standards there that are not often taught. And they're wonderful, they're internally assessed and they deal with the relationship of microbes and humans. 
So there's a huge scope there to work on. And I thought this would be the best place to target outreach. So I wrote a workshop, a two and a half hour workshop, and invited the secondary schools in. So we had the contacts with the teachers. And by Joe's, they came. Um, the secondary school classes from Dunedin came into the department. Some schools sent one class, some schools sent six. It ended up being between five and 700 secondary school kids every uh, year. And I can only run these in June and July, in the middle of the year, we're not doing university teaching. And I've been doing this uh, for about 10 years now. And actually just last week, I've already been contacted by one teacher saying, what are the dates for next July? They want to put it into their teaching timetable. So dependent are they now? And they tell me that they teach this achievement standard solely because the workshop is being offered. And in the workshop, we've got some pictures here, so they come into our department, so they're getting into the university, and, it, and they realise it's not this ivory tower, it's really accessible, and hopefully some kids will also go, oh, I've been to university, maybe I can go when I'm a bit older, because it's really okay in there. And so these are year 11 students, all looking at different aspects of microbiology for the half day that they're with us. And I thought, this is giving urban kids this environment, but what about the rural schools? So I started a travelling workshop. I pick up the car with, I can fit in um, 10 microscopes, a big box of 30 lab coats, another box of stains and slides, and I modified the workshop so it's one hour, so it fits into the school timetable. And over the years, I've gone to a whole lot of areas in Southland, Central Otago and Otago. And so that's a way of spreading the word out into the rural schools. And actually this year our department had um, some microscopes that were access to their use and so with these contacts I'm now in the middle of distributing microscopes to all these schools that have been involved. I can tell you that school rooms all around the Lower South Island are exactly the same. And they smell the same too. Along with um, the workshops and the rural travelling programme, I've made up a kit for teachers. So there's a series of 13 posters like this and um, PowerPoint presentations for teachers and background notes. And with the help of biology educators Aotearoa, this has been distributed to all the secondary schools in New Zealand this year. So finally, um, microbiology, I'm so lucky it's really easily applied to everyday life, we're having great discussions with kids about antimicrobial resistance, about vaccination. Botox is a great one as well. They love it when I tell them it's the most toxic substance on the planet. And then we start talking about the history of it, the uses in the medical spectrum for controlling um, muscle spasms and then moving on to, to cosmetic surgery. It's uh, all these good discussions. So this is what I love, being out there with the kids. And um, I love this quote too, the guardians of our discipline, just as a language is central to culture, it's important that science is seen, heard and understood in the community. So thank you for this discussion.